Even a Hawaii, oh. we got Obama coin we're gonna be paying with. Alright. Thank you. It's quarters. They're all marked up. There's stickers. Wow, we'll send them to the bank. I think that's sort of like a, I don't know, she seemed very suspicious of the Obama coin. I was surprised to see that reaction. <laughs> so what did you just hand her? Can you show me an example? Oh sure, well we, we just paid a toll, uh, the toll here on I-93, I hooks it with Obama coin. Um, I have one here, let me, yeah, here's a full light. This is Obama coin. It has an image of President Barack Obama. It says, change has come to America. And what's the back say? It's, uh, the back is, oh, it's backed by uh, US currency. That's what's great about Obama coin is it has tangible value in Federal Reserve terms. That's probably something. I know it, it's it logical. So right now, it's uh, 1 19 a.m. July 12th, 2014. You know and James Robin Hood Cleveland is about to roll through a DUI checkpoint in Manchester, New Hampshire. Dramatic. I'm going to be dash cam plus James, have passenger you, cam. Have you driven through a checkpoint before? Yes. In the rear, how we many, have. How many have you gone through? Uh, Objectivist Girl and the Voluntarius Rebel. This maybe my second. First maybe three. Happened. How did your first checkpoint go, Rob? I didn't get kidnapped, so it went pretty well. Oh, it's always here when you're not getting kidnapped. Well, there was only one person tonight who's been kidnapped, so he says, right? Yeah, we asked him. Uh, I wonder what? if anyone got a visual on that. That's too bad. It's not like so, enough kidnappings don't happen in the, the world, like we need more. The direction we're heading now, we're going to be passing that checkpoint up on the left. Are you going to slow down for a little bit? I should time it where oh, it looks like we're going through it up. It looks like they don't have a lot of customers. You don't want to put your seatbelt on. Why? Because that noise will keep going. It looks like they're oh. pretty bored. I wonder if that has like to be a got two customers. project. Tell us. They're, they actually have come over to the Free State Project um, and told them when they're going to coffee break so that we can go for a coffee break. Wait, what do you mean they tell the Free State Project? Like they that? tell people that are out here holding signs okay. that they're going for coffee and that they can take a break. And you believe them? Yeah, they actually are legitimately, we've checked on it, they legitimately go for a coffee break. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are all under arrest. Oh my God, that's <laughs> hilarious. I think what they're commenting on is that James's car is like this one. It's a police cruiser. I should get a shot of the outside if I can. Wanna be cop car, you better cool! How do I get back on the main drag there? So what are you feeling right now, James? You want to respond? I don't got my radio. Yeah. This is Dapper Dan. I hear you, Red Lobster. What's up? Arrest them all. <laughs> You're under arrest. Hey guys. Hey guys. That's our art people. Hey, five dollars, man. Five dollars. Oh, 
protesting the yeah, law. Yeah, yeah, right around it, so. Oh, look at your sign up there. It looks perfect. Look at that reflective oh, yeah. tape. Yeah. Wow. No one could miss that. All right, cameras messed up. All right, it's time Here to go, go through the checkpoint. The shoot. Be careful of the police. Woo! Can we put the windows up? Yep. Yeah. James, I'm going to get as close to your personal space as I can to get good audio on that officer and also get a visual on his face. Okay. Just giving you a heads up. Maybe we should, maybe we should ask. I think they'll uh, try and pull over one there. <laughs> maybe we'll see. Hot car. I should go like hit the Dogfort and Dapper Dan in caravan approaching police checkpoint. There's Pedro and Riaz. Best on the right there. Are they gonna wave me down? Oh, they're going to. Got nothing else better to do. Well, you're getting waved down. I know we took all their uh, all the fun out of it. We were just here just to save people. Can I help you? Yes, Captain Hopkins, Manchester Police. We're doing a sobriety checkpoint tonight. Do you have your driver's license with you, sir? If you unroll the window, they can probably film you. Do you have your driver's license with you? Am I obligated to answer? I can't hear you. I said, am I obligated to answer? You're obligated to provide your driver's license if you're operating a motor vehicle in the state of New Hampshire and you're stopped by the police. What, uh, why was I stopped tonight? We're doing a court order sobriety checkpoint. And you were stopped for the checkpoint so we could uh, check your sobriety. Now that I have you stopped, I'd like to see your driver's license, which you are required to produce as a driver in the state of New Hampshire. Which, uh, which RSA is that? You want to go look it up for you? I don't know the number. Well, I'm, I'm not in a huge rush. I can wait if you want to. Are you going to produce your license, sir? I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm under license? duress. I will produce my license under duress. Well, that's fine. Okay. Can I just tell you who I am and you guys can see if I have a license? I'd like to see you have to produce your driver's license, sir. Okay. I'm giving it to you under duress. Okay, I'll, I'm accepting. I'm sorry I'm making you duress. <laughs> All right. There's your license back, sir. I hope that your stress level has come down since I've given your license back to you. We hand these surveys out to checkpoints. I'm sure you'd like to fill that out and mail that back to me. There's an address at the bottom. You're all set to go. How, how often do you guys do these? Oh, I don't know, several times a year. Do you think that this is a good use of police resources to be out here? It's great. I'm all done with you. You can leave. Am I required to leave? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to exercise my rights under Article 8 of accountability. I'd like to just chat with you a little bit longer. Is that okay? No. Um, we're all done. You're all set to go. I'm done chatting with you. So normally... You're free to go. I don't want your duress level to go up <laughs> Well, because obviously, I, I guess we, I, you're not duressed enough that you want to sit here and talk to me now. I mean, I just, I want to ask you about these checkpoints. Okay, well, am I'm I able done. to do that? I'm not answering any of your questions. If I if I park my vehicle and come back, will you speak with me? No, no, I got a job to do, and you're keeping me from doing it. So, you so, need to go. so all these officers are out here. You're saying you're the only one that can do this right now? I'm sorry? I said with all these other officers, you're the only person that can do this? Get do what? what? Whatever role you're doing right now, you guys are not interchangeable in some way? I'm not quite sure what, you, what you're asking. Uh, well, I'm just, I'm just curious if I can um, pick your brain a little bit about what you guys are doing here tonight. because no, you're holding things up. We're all done. Go. Sir, you have to leave. Okay, I'm, I'm going to come back on foot. Is that okay? You're going to come what? I'm going to walk back on foot. Is that okay? Will I'm you speak to me? I'm not going to talk to you. I'm out here doing a job. I'm done with you. Let's go. Come on. Okay. Well, I don't want to hold up traffic. 
I feel like you guys are the ones holding up traffic, though. Go. Okay, I'm leaving. Right, I'll see you in a minute. Have a nice night. How do you feel that went? It was ridiculous. I mean, so supposedly you have this right of accountability under the New Hampshire Constitution where basically it says that all public officials and their servants and their agents, I don't remember the exact language, are at all times to be accountable to the people basically. And obviously that's not the case. I mean, I wanted to have a conversation about what they're doing and I wasn't going to take up that much of that gentleman's time. But obviously he didn't want to talk to me, unfortunately. Do you think that he knew the definition of the word duress? I don't think he understood it. I think he thought I meant d distress. That's what he, I think he was I using it in that context. Level. Yeah. It appeared to me he did not know the definition of the word duress. <laughs> well, to me, duress means I'm being forced to do something with a, under threat, basically. So I'm duress to do it. You know, I don't know what he thinks it means. Can you give a synonym for what you meant by duress? Um, yeah, basically, you're, you're threatened to do something. I don't know another word. For I call it being coerced. Extortion, maybe. I guess it's not. Yeah, coercion. That's a good synonym for it. Where are you heading now? I guess I'm going to go park and try to talk to the guy. Hey, look. Oh, never mind. That cop just put on his lights and then went through the intersection. Yeah, oh, and then off. turned them off? Yeah. I want to build some muscle. Yeah. Yeah, going through for convenience. So, what, what if this isn't about safety? What if this is about control? So, when I was involved with the Army, there's these things called traffic control points. Just Google traffic control points, U.S. Army. It's very similar to this. To me, in my opinion, this is what an occupying force does. I mean, it's like you guys are inconveniencing everyone on the chance that someone might be unsafe. You know what I mean? There has to be better alternatives. I mean, how many officers are out here right now? Couldn't you guys provide a service where I could call, and if I'm drunk, you guys give me a ride home? Like, isn't there a better way to do this? Is there any possible way that we can address the problem of impaired driving without inconveniencing every motorist that happens to go past this point, or potentially every motorist? Obviously, some motorists go by. I don't think this is about safety. I think it's about teaching people to be obedient. It's about control. You guys are acting like an occupying force. I don't feel that you're providing safety right now. I'm, I'm open. I'm all ears if you have anything you want to say. I don't... Who, who's in charge here tonight? Are you in charge, sir? Yeah. Okay. Well, I met you earlier. I'm James. Yeah. And I, I can't remember your name. I'm sorry. Captain... Hopkins. Hodgkins? Hopkins. Hopkins. I'm sorry. You're entitled to well, how how many of these have you done that you felt like you have improved public safety substantially? There's look how many resources there are out here out here tonight. Shouldn't you guys be focused on property crime and, and violent crimes? Are you telling me that there's no fights in bars tonight? There's no one trying to break into a house. There's nothing like that. I mean, you guys are all out here. There's four cruisers. There's six officers I see here. I mean, I feel like you guys could be doing other things. Seems relatively friendly. Uh, do you feel like your message is 
mean, I don't know. I just, my goal, I, I think we really have to think about we're, we're becoming a police state. You know, we're, I say we are, the, the government is becoming a police state. So, I, I think it's a real issue and, and something, people really need to really consider what's going on here. And it's just amazing that people accept it, you know. It, it seems like every year yeah, just got the about police force, the, the police continue to do these things. Right, maybe so. I mean, obviously I think impaired driving is an issue, but there has to be other ways to solve it. I think you could educate people instead of potentially enforcing against people. Don't get me wrong, I don't want anyone to get hurt because someone else is impaired driving. That's not a good thing. So, you know, I just don't agree with this solution. Why would they go? Why would they? You know, sometimes freedom can be messy. Well, they are. You know, if people have the right to defend themselves with firearms, someone might use it in a bad way. If you have the right to consume alcohol or beverages, someone may be irresponsible and drive their car after they consume too much. But, you know, the, the solution is not to crack down on. filming and now Joelle is filming us filming each other and Film you're just sitting there and why are we doing activism so just filming Stop each other? Here! What are they spraying? Like chemtrails.com. That it's the Atlas, remember that the Titan from Greek origin, and he had the world in here and he couldn't stand it. He was there forever. And he just said to shrug. Shrug means doing this. Agorism, agorism. It has a question crickets. Well, I think crickets are a wonderful little animal, but they usually signify the end of the talk, and so I will stop talking now. Wait, first off, what the are you filming in portrait instead of landscape? Think of the Dogecoin revolution. I've seen it just about everywhere here in Parkfest, and it looks like it's going to be the next big thing. What do you think about that? Well, I'm glad to see that Doge is surpassing Bitcoin. I think it's good to have a concept-driven cryptocurrency as opposed to one that's just about bits. I mean, I'd rather focus on Doges than bits. But uh, my personal opinion is that hard currency definitely has its place when you're walking around being able to without an actual piece of currency, so that's why I carry with me Obama coin. And Obama coin is what I think is a way of the future. But there's no Doges on those. Could no, you could you do a Doge Obama coin? I suppose there could be like a uh, maybe like a overlaying of the images, the, the president and, and the, the Doge in chief. Yeah. Uh. Ron Paul is the message. Yes. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. Thanks, but no tanks. It's time to say no more. We won't take or give any more. That's why we're singing thanks. Thanks, but no clanks. Dogecoin, 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 Dogecoin. <laughs> Over here you can get some fried doge. So we have the the third car today, is it Joel, that's been sold uh, at Porkfest for Dogecoin? Yeah. That's uh it's not quite like the Bitmobile that was bought from Derrick Dare Derrick Perry last year. That's like a quality car, Prius. It's not like a used ten year old or more thing. That's like a new car. You can buy new cars. Welcome to Objectivist Girl. So many of you guys heard me on Free Talk Live on Thursday. Let me 
There, that is for Ayn Rand. This is one Atlas Shrug. Uh. Do you think it's time we had a Doge president of the United States of America? Maybe we could start out a little safer and be like Speaker of the House or you know, Senate Whip or something. I'd be I'd be down for that. Hey everyone, it's Derek J. Today is July 11th, 2014, and it's a very special day because I'm sitting right next to Rich Paul! Hey! So, those of you who have been following along know that Rich has been in jail for the past month? Two months? Uh, 36 days. 36 days exactly, and that's because he was arrested for a violation of probation, uh, namely holding a stick and um, peeing with THC in his bloodstream, allegedly, and uh, anyway, it, I'm glad that he's out. Yesterday's now, just to clarify, it wasn't for holding the stick while I was peeing. It was <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It, it was it was picking up a stick and stopping a riot, but it was a different stick. Important distinction, yes. yes. Rich. But uh, <laughs> how do you feel now that you're out? How did you feel yesterday's uh, bail hearing went? It was supposed to be a violation of probation hearing. We were going to see the whole trial happen, or not a trial, it's a hearing. We watched the video of the alleged violation, and then bail was set for five. $500 plus some conditions. You want to talk about yeah, what happened? it was like they were having a fire sale on Rich Paul's. I mean, before that, they wouldn't let you have one at any price, and then they're letting them go for $500, <laughs> which is a bargain. Um, <laughs> and, uh, were you surprised you know, about yesterday? Uh, no, I, I kind of expected it, um, especially I was so happy that we got the video in because really the... In terms of my criminal activity on the video, there's no there there. There's there's no criminal activity by me on that uh, on that video. I mean, I picked up a stick and stopped a riot, and I'm not saying that they should give me a medal, but you know, I, I wouldn't vote against it. But uh, you know, so you know, once the video was seen, I was not surprised. Although I was relieved that they set bond on me, and apparently there was a sidebar conversation between the prosecutor and the judge and my attorney in which the judge pretty much said, I didn't really see him do anything wrong on that video, and I'm not sure what we're doing here. Um, yeah, that's, I was that's surprised. That's a paraphrase. The judge didn't seem to be upset about it at all. Uh, I was getting a close-up of the judge's reactions while he was watching the video itself. So you can find that. Uh, it's on this channel, Derek J. Live. And also, we're continuing to fundraise for Rich because this isn't over. He's got, like, fines and stuff to pay, which is totally unjust because they're making him pay fines in the amount of, like, $3,500. Anyway, we're trying to raise that money because it's got to be paid to the state no matter what or else Rich yeah. is going to sit in a cage for even longer. So you can donate at GoFundMe.com slash GoRichPaul. There's even a Bitcoin donation so you can send in your Bitcoin from far away without supporting the king. Yeah, Thank and you. hey, if you uh, if you donate $100 or more, you can win a date with Rich Paul. <laughs> How's that, ladies? <laughs> or, or fellas? You know, I'll rub your feet or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good deal. So it's GoFundMe.com slash GoRichPaul. Peace. Hey, what's going on? Hold on. Stop the bike. Police confiscating cameras. It doesn't happen that often in New Hampshire. But when it does, I think it deserves extra special attention. No search warrant to seize all your recording devices cell phone so you can go ahead and shut that off the most scandalous video is the one that is not allowed to be shown to the public or which is delayed in being shown to the public but because authorities seized it well something like this apparently happened in Keene how are you good Great. Glad Glad to, hear it. to this man Robin Hood himself James Cleveland also known as youtube.com slash lightspeed liberty Take your video cameras. Freaking losers. You will not touch anything. Shut your ass up. Shut the up. You will not touch anything. Shut the up. Alright. You will not touch anything. Shut the up. Alright. You will not touch anything. Shut the up. Alright. You will not touch anything.
I'll talk to you any kind of way I want. No, you, won't. you ain't got no respect for nobody around you, so why should I have respect for your dumb ass? Now there have been a lot of scandalous things that have happened to the Free Keen activists and their allies. A man apparently having his neck broken by an assault. A man apparently sentenced to 60 days in jail for speaking to a government official. Another one thrown in jail for an extended period of time because he, without hurting anyone, defended someone from an assault. Yeah, because you videotaped me, man. You ain't got no... As we see more and more evidence that Keen really is what I've been calling it, New Hampshire's North Korea, well, the fact is some of it we're just not seeing. And that's the part that m must get the most attention. We can't do... We, we, we have to take action that punishes the police for seizing video. Otherwise, they'll do it more. Governor, your state police have seized the recording equipment of an independent reporter who has interviewed you. Out in Keene, do you even know that it happened? And you, should you be working for a governor that doesn't answer questions from New Hampshire's number two YouTube channel? This goes back to, I guess it's a kind of thinking that I had all the way back in the mid 80s. Uh, I once gave a presentation, I was, on, uh, I was trying to get a scholarship, I guess around 1986. Uh, and I went before a, a board of newspapermen in Oklahoma. I, I, you know, I was a University of Oklahoma student in journalism. And I wrote an essay. I made a point that my big concern at that time was that the mainstream national media was ignoring uh, abuses that happened inside the Soviet bloc. And their excuse for ignoring these abuses was that, well, we're not allowed to film there, so we're just not covering stuff there. They were essentially rewarding Yuri Andropov and Nikolai Ceausescu for their bans on cameras. They were tamely complying and focusing their attention on abuses in South Africa, where a less totalitarian government was letting the press in. This was, I thought, the great journalistic abuse of our time in the 80s, and I still feel that I was right about that as a college student. Have every right so shut, off the, shut it off, or you're going to be coming with me. Well, it's the same thing now inside the United States. The, the greatest abuse is when a camera is seized, video is suppressed. My suspicion is that in this case, you know, they'll probably allow the video to be released. It may already be back in James Cleveland's hand, you know, after they took the video away from him. And it's unlikely they'll actually delete the video, but... Stop stealing cameras! Stop stealing cameras! Before this peaceable revolution has played out, there will be an incident where they seize someone's video and it never sees the light of day.